Wow, I am so excited to have all of you here in Orlando. Um, it's going to be a great event. We've got 44 different breakout sessions for you. This event is, as always, about two things. First, about getting focused on your business and really thinking hard and peeling away all the rest of the clutter. That's what the breakout sessions are for. The other thing you're here for are the parties, OK? So uh, we've got some awesome parties tonight. And we have what is going to be probably my favorite party of all time, the Off the Grid party on Saturday, all right? And Off the Grid, the way we came up with that concept was, you know, all of us, and I don't know if you're like me, but when I go on vacation, I'm not on vacation because I'm always tethered to my iPhone, to my, you know, we, we can get to our information. I can bring up ConnectWise. I can check on what's going on in the office. You never really get away. The only time we seem to get away is when we literally have no internet connection at all, right? We're completely off the grid. So that's what this party is all about. You are not allowed to bring any recording devices because what happens off the grid stays off the grid, OK? So we hope you're going to have a great time. You know, I got to just share one personal thing uh, about being here today uh, at this facility. We're very excited to be here. Uh, in 1919, post-World War I, uh, Italy was devastated by World War I. And my grandfather in Italy couldn't find work. He heard that the United States had you know, streets paved with gold. And so he got, literally, he got on a banana boat and came over. And he came through Ellis Island to New York City looked around for work. Guess where he found his first job? First job he got was a busboy at the Waldorf Astoria in New York City. So it's kind of fun for me because the very first dollar that the Bellini family ever earned in the United States was at the Waldorf. And so here we are at the Hilton and Waldorf. So it's just an exciting thing for me to kind of come full circle on this. And he was at the Waldorf. What he did there, his, uh, he, he was very ambitious. We, fig you know, figured, we figured out where the entrepreneurship came from in the family. He was very ambitious. Uh, the pastry chefs at the Waldorf were world renowned for, for the work that they did. And he wanted to learn the recipes, so they would not give it to him. German chefs, he went and he says, how do you make that uh, pastry? And they'd say, nah, get out of here. So what he did is he would take out the garbage at night, and he would count the, the eggshells, he would count the uh, sleeves of butter, and he would reverse engineer their pastry uh, <laughs> size. So uh, he actually opened up a bakery, and that was the first kind of entrepreneurial thing that the Bellini family did. So what I, what I am excited about here today is, is kind of carrying on that whole entrepreneurial concept. And we're all entrepreneurs in this room today. And there's a lot of things that are on our minds, I know. Wayne made fun of the cloud, and to some extent, that's absolutely accurate. You know, the cloud, there's so much talk about the cloud. I mean, the cloud, the cloud, the cloud, the cloud, the cloud, the cloud. You know, I'm waiting for Domino's to announce that they're going to start delivering pizzas in the cloud. You know, everything seems to be in the cloud. So last year, we talked about the last mile. So we're going to go ahead and cover that again this year real quick. There we go. All right. What is the last mile? Last mile is, if you, think, if you think about our industry, we're going to do this real quick. For those of you that have seen the last mile, we're going to take this all the way through. What we're going to talk about today is what your position is in the industry, where it's going, and how it's going to be weakened or threatened, I would say, because I think we all can agree that it, it's, it's potentially in, in dire, in, it's in a situation where it's going to be threatened from the cloud. And third, we're going to tell you how to defend that. Last, we're going to tell you what ConnectWise is doing to help, OK? So traditionally, we've all seen, worked with vendors in the, forever. We've worked with vendors. Vendors have always been very close to enterprise. And they're able to easily sell to enterprise. Let's go ahead and show you that. What we typically work with is small to mid-sized business. 
And small to mid-sized business is typically what all of us have our businesses focused on. We make our bread and butter on small to mid-sized business. Now, I know there's people out there that do some enterprise work, but I would say that 90, my, my statistics say that about 90% of all of our revenue comes from small to mid-sized business. And in the past, the way that we have worked with vendors is we've always owned that last mile because they can't really get to those small to mid-sized businesses very easily. It's just not economically feasible for them. So we take our shopping cart, we roll over there, we decide which vendors we're working with, we put it in the basket, we go back and we deliver that uh, to our clients. And so we've always had the advantage of having this last mile, this last mile that they can't seem to penetrate. The thing that is interesting today is that a lot of that is changing. The vendors now are pushing forward, and really that last mile is really becoming the last yard. And the way that they're doing that is they're taking absolutely everything that they have, tossing it up into the cloud, and then deploying that. And what they're doing in reality is they're floating it right over our client base. And as they're floating it over our client base, we don't necessarily have anything that we can do or say about it. And I think if I had to hit on the one thing that I hear from all of you is, I'm really worried about this. What's gonna happen as all of these products are floated over my client base, not through me, okay? Am I gonna lose my clients, all right? So what I'm gonna do today is try to demystify that, completely simplify that, and hopefully give you guys some answers, guys and girls, some answers to that. You know, the concern that we all have is that, and, it, and it's happening, I know it's happening to some of us, as these clouds are floating over, these offerings are floating over, some clients are taking up on them, and all of a sudden, they're working directly with the vendor. They're completely going over our head, they're completely bypassing us. So that's the biggest concern that we hear out there. And the one thing that I guess I would say is that there's ways that you can defend against this. There's, there's things that we can do. And by the way, you know, we talk about vendors that are doing this. You know, I'm not, I'm not getting on the vendors about that. This is their position in life. This is what they're supposed to do. There's really nothing that economically they should be doing this. But at the same time, we should have great concerns about that. So what we're going to try and uh, describe to you today is how you, as the IT nation, get centered. How do you actually sit in a control panel and stay in control of your clients during this onslaught of cloud, uh, cloud, cloud computing and everything being thrown up into the cloud? So the objective here is to create a relationship with vendors where we are in such control that we do not lose clients and that as, as this whole thing evolves, and, and by the way, it's evolving very quickly is what we're seeing. As this whole thing evolves, that the relationships are still coming right through us, okay? That's the big thing that we're gonna really be talking about today. And actually, what's good, the good news here is it's a little bit simpler than we all think. The great position that we have at ConnectWise is we get to listen to all of you, we hear what's going on, and we're able to really figure out, it's like we're all talking about the same thing, we're all worried about the same thing, and it's kind of funny, it's almost like Dorothy in Wizard of Oz, you know, we all have the answer, we just have to click our heels and realize we're already in a position of control, even as this thing moves from the last mile to the last yard. So, let's go ahead and talk about how we're gonna go ahead and take care of that. How do we get in a position of control during this whole phenomenon of the last mile, all right? Becoming the last yard. Our answer for that is the modern office. This is how computing is gonna be done. So, you know, if you think about it, historically, uh, there's some things that we have heard from small business, and there's some things that we're hearing now from small business that is a little bit different. So small business owners and entrepreneurs out there, one thing we're hearing for sure is that everyone feels like we're bouncing back. They're all feeling like we're bouncing back. How many of you all got your uh, Wall Street Journal today? Anyone see that? Guess what? Just in time for the ConnectWise Partner Summit, IT Nation, 
The, uh, the Dow Jones has now reached 11,434, and it's back to where it was in 2008 for the first time. So not only is small business rebounding, and by the way, small business rebounds way before enterprise-type businesses rebound. So the good news is it's well on the way. The other thing, just in time for IT Nation, $600 billion from the Federal Reserve pumped into the economy. That's massive. In fact, that's not just a United States phenomenon. phenomenon. That is going to be a worldwide phenomenon because they're buying up treasury bills. So that's good news for absolutely everybody. So everyone's bouncing back at this point, which is great. The other thing we're hearing from small business is they're completely willing to outsource. You know, this is, I don't know if you've been in the same position I've been in, but I walk into uh, a small business, and the second I see an internal IT resource, I think, ah, you know, I might as well just turn around and walk out of here. Because they're going to do everything in their power to make sure that we don't get into that account. What we're hearing now, though, from small businesses, they're completely open and interested in outsourcing that function. First time ever where they're really willing to talk about that. That's an awesome thing for us. That's one thing that you want to really plant in your, in your brains and say, when you get scared, when you go, what's happening out there, go, small business is willing to outsource, all right? The good news about small business willing to outsource is that small business wants to work with other small businesses, all right? We're a 200-person company at ConnectWise. We do not use Price Waterhouse as our CPA firm, okay? We have a small regional CPA firm. So small businesses work with small businesses. Our law firm, regional law firm, okay? People like to work with companies that are of the same size. So, and if they're willing to outsource, then they're more likely to talk to you than anything else. The other thing that we're hearing from small businesses, they want absolute instant gratification. And what I mean by that is that IT is so important to them now, they cannot wait the traditional amount of time for things to get resolved, problems to get resolved. They want someone fixing it very quickly. Is anyone experiencing that out there? Show of hands. Incredibly impatient, aren't they, right? The great news about that is that, you know, with remote monitoring and management tools, we're all able to jump in and take care of at least what we're finding, 70% of their requests can be handled remotely if you have a good uh, remote monitoring and management tool. So that's awesome, and there's tons of them out there that are awesome. The other thing that we're uh, hearing from them is that they are adding technology rather than adding payroll dollars. Every small business is way more interested in spending on technology and increasing productivity rather than increasing payroll. And it is their second largest spend now. It could turn out in the next five years that small business spends more money on technology than they spend on payroll. Could happen, okay? Hopefully, they're spending it with us. And the last thing that we're hearing from them is that they are curious about the cloud. Very few of them are willing to move into the cloud. It's interesting. I hear different things from different people. But, but there's some people who say, my clients are really interested, and I'm getting some of them to go to the cloud. Some of them, and these are people that have their own regional data centers. They have their own rack at, at uh, say, Rackspace. They might be renting a rack there. They might have built their own data center. Uh, they might be working with a, a partner, a ConnectWise partner, and, and renting out some of their space. I know Sarah Ducharn uh, in Boston has built a huge facility, and she's working with other ConnectWise partners up in the Boston area that don't want to build their own uh, cloud infrastructure. So curious about the cloud, that's a good thing as well. So let's talk about uh, the things that we've traditionally sold into these accounts. We've always sold hardware. Some of us have given up on that. A lot of us are going back to that. I mean, hardware uh, is, is an easy sell. Uh, hardware is really becoming hardware as a service now. And this is a great breakout session that will help you understand hardware as a service if you're interested in getting in, back into hardware as a service, OK? And by the way, this is your traditional small business. I mean, if you look at this, there's about 25 people in this office. 
This is our typical office. This is a typical kind of client that we deal with. The other thing we've always sold, right? Historically, software. We always have sold software. Uh, another great breakout session for that is uh, Google. Google is here. They're talking about Google Apps. Interesting, it's a software as a service play. Uh, they are one of those vendors that is really willing to work with us and work through us, okay? Um, great solution there. Professional services, we've always sold professional services. Uh, good breakout sessions here as well for that. So if you see, it's sort of like, you look at this, it's like, yeah, yeah, Arnie, I get it, I get it. You know, we do hardware, we do software, we do professional services. Uh, yeah, yeah, we do infrastructure. These are all of our, these are all of our linch points into this small to mid-sized business, all right? And these are the things that you need to refocus on and say, do I do any of these things? Have I abandoned any of these things? Do I have to abandon these things? The answer is you don't have to. Uh, so infrastructure, sure, we do that. Uh, New thing that a lot of us are making money on, great solutions that are out there, a lot of vendors here that are offering disaster recovery and backup solutions, great way to increase recurring revenue, some great breakout sessions on that as well. So you start looking at it and you say, you know, I actually do have a lot of anchor points in this particular small business here. Email management, you know, they all need us for email management. Some other things that we have, we have, uh, Website management, a lot of you are coming back to helping your clients with websites or website management. Now, I'm not saying that we're all gonna do all of these things, but as I go through this, just check off the things that you go, I do it, I do it, I do it, because I want you to come up with a number at the end in your mind. I want you to say, I have two of these, I have three of these, I have five of these. Website management, some great uh, breakout session on that as well. You know, here's the thing, that's the first thing that's actually been out in the cloud, right? Websites have always been a cloud solution. So if you want to talk about the big hype about the cloud, it's like, that's always been there. We've always had that. No one's ever worried about that, right? Who's concerned about website, losing a client because they have a website? I'm not. It's another way for me to make money. Remote monitoring and management, thanks, thank God, and automation. This is the way that we can take care of 70% of their problems remotely. And this is how we can give them that, inst by the way, that's how we give them their instant gratification as well. Tons of breakout sessions from vendors here uh, about remote monitoring and management as well. By the way, they're all in your guide there, as you know. Help desk, near and dear to my heart. The thing that we're seeing is if you have a good remote monitoring tool, an automation tool, and, and this is the key part, if you have a good help desk function in your company, that's where you can really take control of your clients, more so than anything else. I've talked with partners, many partners, they all worry, we all worry about the cloud, we all worry about control of those clients. I will tell you this, more than any other area of your business, help desk, and having good help desk functions, and, you, and by the way, using ConnectWise the right way, which we've got a whole set of best practices on how to use ConnectWise and how to manage your field people and manage your uh, knock people with tickets. It's all about taking care of those tickets, delivering a good SLA, and that's how we were able to do it remotely. If we're able to do that remotely, if we have a good remote monitoring and management tool, we're in really good shape there. Uh, you know, and I wanna just cover this real quick. You know, this actually is a screenshot, and I know it's not that easy to see, but this is a screenshot of a typical help desk, right? This is the dispatch portal in ConnectWise. And I wanted to just share this little tip trick with you. If you have two or more people working help desk full time in your company, you really need to dispatch help desk, right? What I mean by that is have someone, maybe it's one of those two people, uh, schedule the tickets. What we found is that ConnectWise partners that schedule their tickets end up creating awesome process and great help desk 
and they get very sticky with their clients. The ones that don't, they have their technicians or their help desk people are looking at that screen for about an hour a day, trying to figure out which tickets do I work. Cherry pick this one, do that one. Uh, oh, I like that client, mm, that one looks easy. Oh, I'm kind of tired today, I'm not gonna tackle that one. It's, it's chaos, right? You get rid of that chaos by having one of those people assigned to dispatching that. And if you're larger, you know, like at ConnectWise, we now have 41 support uh, folks that are supporting you. They all get dispatched, right? So here's the thing. Their job becomes a lot, lot greater job satisfaction because what they're doing is they're looking at a finite list of things. They go right to their My Schedule and ConnectWise and they start working down the tickets. And I can actually see as they're putting time on those tickets. I can see where exactly they are on their list. An average help desk technician works about 15 tickets a day. They spend about, if you let them just work the service board, they spend an hour a day looking at the board and figuring out which ones to do. So I would rather say take a half an hour of one of those people's time and say you are now the dispatcher. First thing in the day, you drag and drop the tickets that we need to be paying attention to today, right? And then you'll look at me and you'll go, yeah, but tickets keep coming in, they keep coming in, they keep coming in. It's like, right, there's processes that you want to put in place for which ones to handle when, and you make the dispatcher in charge of that one function instead of everybody in the company. I wanted to point that out, it's a detailed point, but it has, I have had many partners come up and say it's made a massive change in their business. This is going to be a great breakout session uh, on Help Desk, it's going to be awesome. Uh, Steve Winter from Ergos is heading that one up. Steve and I have talked, Steve's got about 12 people that he dispatches on his help desk. He controls his clients through his help de desk relationship. Okay, so we're getting, starting to get a lot of things out here. What about voice over, uh, voice over IP, voice networking? How many folks are doing that? How many people are thinking about doing it? You know, here's the thing that's kind of cool about where we're going in this industry, right? Everything's becoming digital. Everything is data. Everything is traveling across the internet. So in, in the past, it's always been, you know, you had a phone vendor. You had a, you had a computer vendor, right? Uh, if, if, you, if you had security systems, you had a security camera vendor. All of that stuff is digital now. All of that stuff is data. All of that is just servers and endpoints. The phone's the endpoint. Many, many partners are getting into voice over IP. They're partnering with vendors, by the way, that are in the, a lot of them are partnering with vendors that are in the cloud. So they're controlling that relationship and that relationship is moving right through them. Good breakout session on that as well. All right, I know this is getting long, but it's important, okay, mobile. All right, how many, how many people have clients that are using mobile? Technology, come on, everybody. All right. You know, here's the cool thing about mobile, and a little bit scary in a way. The new standard for mobile is gonna travel at 50 gigabits, right? 50 gigabits. They're actually putting up a 50 gigabit wireless mobile connection in the Tampa Bay area, Verizon is, as, as, as an experiment, as a, as a kind of a pilot, right? 50 gigabit, I don't know about you, but I mean, I don't, what do you have wired to your desk? Hardwired to my desk, to my PC, is I think 10 gigabit, right? We're talking 50 gigabit, okay? That's gonna change absolutely everything. The other thing that's interesting, and you hear, you know, I listen to um, uh, Eric Schmidt, the, the CEO of Google, is, has always got some interesting things to say. And Google now, their whole mission now is to write everything on the mobile device first. Now, if we get around to doing the desktop version, we will, but we're gonna put the mobile version of it out first because more searches are now happening through mobile. It's now surpassing desktop searches, right? Uh, more people are accessing information through mobile. Mobile's becoming a big, big part of what everyone's doing now, as we all know. And here's the thing, it's like mobile is, again, it's a cloud-based service. Think about it. How many of you have been worried about mobile uh, are you worried about, mo if your clients are using mobile, are you worried about losing that client? No, no one's worried about losing that client if you have mobile. Again, another cloud thing. Security, we all offer security, some good 
uh, uh, options on security for breakout session there as well. Telecommuting. We've all got clients that telecommute. They've got a person working from home. They've got a small remote office with two or three people in it. And all of a sudden, they've got their servers under the roof and everybody's communicating back in there. Okay, this is yet another part of cloud computing. Good breakout sessions on that. Another part of cloud computing that I'm not worried about losing a client because they have people that telecommute, all right? Telepresence, we're gonna go through a couple more. Telepresence is digital, right? I know Zenith has is, is got a brand new offering uh, for telepresence, and they're actually offering it as a, a subscription service. There's lots of solutions out there for that. That, again, is a digital solution. More things that come into your wheelhouse, more things that you can put into your bag of tricks. Digital signage. A lot of people are doing digital signage now. Digital, again, another PC. It's wired to the cabling in the office. Another anchor point for you. So if you go through this, you can see there's lots and lots and lots of different options for you to get anchor points into your clients. Vendor management, this is an interesting one. I'm gonna spend just a minute on this. Vendor management. How many folks are actually doing vendor management where you're saying, I'm gonna take control of the phone vendor. I'm gonna take control of the internet vendor. I'm going to take control of that copier vendor. You know you all get the calls. We all get the calls anyway, right? Don't you? You get those calls, but you're not getting, you're getting, you know, I, we'll, get, we'll get called in the middle of the night because the clients, they're doing payroll and the client's internet connection is down. We're not making any money on that internet connection, but we're the first person they call. So in my opinion, you know, the copier's not working. We're the first person. I can't print out to my copier, you know. Copier guy comes out and says, yeah, talk to your network, dude, right? We're all doing that management. We're not taking control of it. And one of the things I would suggest is that if you're really trying to add one more thing to your, focus on help desk. The other thing I would really suggest is focus on vendor management. Vendor management, take control of that client's data infrastructure. It's not so hard to, to take control of the phone vendor. It's not very hard to take control of the copier vendor. It's not hard to take control of the internet vendor, okay? And what I would suggest is, the reality is, we can all make that happen together very easily. It's as simple as having configuration forms for the phone vendor in ConnectWise, a configuration form in ConnectWise to record all the information about the internet line, a configuration form in ConnectWise about the copier company, okay? Document those things, charge your client for documenting those things, and then when they call you, guess what? You're gonna have the answers and the information and all the data that you need to start to take control of that relationship. And by the way, that doesn't mean that you're fixing it, and that's the thing I wanna point out. It just means that you are the point person your clients want, that small business, they don't want anything to do with it. They'd rather deal with one person. Who is that one person gonna be? Because I can tell you right now, that one person is now becoming people you're not even thinking are your competition. I talked to a partner yesterday. He lost a client to a local law firm. He didn't lose a law firm client. He lost one of his managed service accounts to a local law firm because they're jumping into that business. Another, another partner said that she lost a managed service account to a hospital. Didn't lose a hospital client, lost an account, lost one of her managed service clients to a hospital because they're now jumping into that IT space and they're specializing on working with hospitals, okay? If you have those forms filled out in ConnectWise, you know who to contact, and here's the best part. Start charging on your managed service agreements at 100 bucks or 99 bucks, get it to two digits, a month for managing that account. You get paid to document it, you're gonna get the call anyway, you get paid 100 bucks a month, that's 1,200 bucks a year for every client, do the math, it's a lot of money. You're gonna get the call anyway. And by the way, I've done this before where I said, okay, how many problems did we take care of that were really not a responsibility where we for, were forced to do vendor management? 
and you look at an account, and I guarantee every one of you go, uh, we only got to charge about 400, 500, 600 bucks this last year for this account, doing that. And we had, we, they, they still came at us with, with, the, in, with the attitude of we were supposed to take care of that problem. So take control of that. If you take control of the vendor management, you've got control of the account as well. Very important, okay? And that's something that, that is gonna be a project of mine is to work with you. If any of you, who's doing vendor management out there? We're gonna help you do vendor management. We're gonna put together, I would like anyone that's doing vendor management, please, as a community effort, You've got good configuration forms. Go to your setup tables and, and, and use the ConnectWise community shared template. Share them with us, okay? Let's all take the best configuration forms that we have for vendor management and let's push them up so that the community can see them and use them. Don't consider that a competitive advantage. Share that with everyone and what'll happen is you'll see more and more people sharing those configuration forms, okay? It's as simple as going to your setup tables. There's a button there to upload it, okay? And then also on in ConnectWise, you can go to shared templates. It's in the other tab. Click it and bring it up, and you can download those forms directly into your system. So you can all, if we just, if, if people just went and did that, we had some good forms out there, everybody could very quickly have the intellectual property to do vendor management. And the other thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna put together a white paper on that and we're going to start instructing you and put a TV show out on vendor management because I think that's one of the most important things. Good breakout on that. Okay, gonna move fast here. Printer management, not sexy. Who's doing it? What do I mean by doing printer management, okay? People are now, Xerox has a, pro a product called PagePack, okay, where you put a printer into the client and they pay you per page that they print on it. It's a managed service, it's managed print, okay? It's a really cool concept when you think about it. Uh, some RMM vendors are now putting the ability to grab that information into their packages and now they're able to hand it to us ConnectWise as Xerox is and we're able to bill for it. The billing can happen directly through ConnectWise. Print management is an incredible incredibly profitable uh, area, it's just real boring, right? It's not sexy, it's something we go, ah, we all chase that shiny object, that new shiny object, right? In technology, this is not sexy, this is not cool, but it is very profitable, it's a way to be sticky with a client, okay? Printers will always be under that roof, all right? Surveillance, again, a new thing that's digital. These are just IP cameras that are wireless that you stick up around the client's location and they all go back to a centralized server that is usually a Windows-based server. This is not rocket science. This is another sticky point that a lot of partners are able to get to. So start looking around this and you'll see there's just a, a number of places, okay? Co-managed IT, all right? Our answer for that is ConnectWise Streamline IT, where you share your ConnectWise with that internal IT department. Internal IT departments have no tools. They don't have any tools. You've got clients that have internal IT departments. You also have clients that maybe have a break-fix person on, on staff. They have no ticketing system. Their ticketing system is their inbox. Everybody sends email to them. They manage it as best as they can. They don't deliver good service. They don't deliver good SLAs. If you did nothing more than give them a login to your ConnectWise, you can set up your ConnectWise so you can have a location that is a specific client. They have their own service board. They have their own email address, email connector, okay? Everybody sends email to that, right? Every, every single internal IT resource does their work the same way. They get emails, and usually they set up an, an email like we all have, support at, you know, abcinsurance.com. All you gotta do is add to that, make it a distribution list, add an email account to that that is your email address that connects it to your service board, that connects it to their service board. They can be in ConnectWise, they can be completely quadrant off in ConnectWise, they can't get to any of your stuff, but your entire help desk team can look in on their board and help them. They can flip a, a status and automatically have that rotate over to your help desk board. 
You can set all of this up in ConnectWise. Okay, this is a way that you can walk into an account, even if you don't know how to do it. Don't worry about learning how to do it. Talk to your clients and see if they're interested. This is another place that we're going to help you figure out what to do there and how to do that and put together some information for you on that. But there's a lot of partners that are out there that are doing this very successfully. By the way, just to clear up any confusion, we've always called this downstream IT. And we found out when partners were going to their uh, end clients and saying, hey, what about downstream IT? We, we've got a product called downstream IT. The IT resources didn't like the term of being downstream, right? So now we're calling it streamline IT, right? Uh, same thing. It's just one, a user in ConnectWise that is theirs, that is completely secured to their location, completely secured in. Uh, good breakout session on that. If you want to learn more about that, I would definitely encourage you to take control of co-managed IT inside your clients as well. Okay, last thing, uh, cloud services. This is the thing that everyone is most concerned about. Now, we've gone through this whole thing here, right? Good breakout session on cloud services. Now, we've gone through every single thing here. And if you look at it, you go, yeah, I do maybe three, four. What's your number? I asked you to come up with a number. How many of these things do you do? If it's three or more, uh, if it's four or more, you're probably in good shape. You're probably sticky enough. But I would encourage you to get a few more because the concern that everyone has is that cloud services, that that data center, that those servers that are underneath that client's roof are going to pop out of there and end up in the cloud. That's our greatest concern, right? Now, all of a sudden, there's nothing in that data center. Now what do I do? All the servers are gone. You know, my answer is, so what? Guess what? They still have a firewall. In fact, they use it more than ever. Security is a bigger issue than ever if things are out in the cloud, right? They still have printers. They still have to have a machine in front of them to get to wherever the stuff is. They still have infrastructure. That's still there. They're still going to need professional services. They're still going to need hardware. They're still going to need software. It might be software as a service, but you can resell that. And none of us really make that much money on software anyway. They're still going to have a line of business solution that probably is going to be a server that stays underneath the roof, at least for the next couple years. So even if, even if the entire set of servers goes out into the cloud, you still can be completely anchored into that client. All right? The only thing, and I would say the biggest concern that I would have is, is you know, as long as there's people under that roof, uh, you're not going to have a problem. You know, if you think about it, this is really what we're calling the cloud office, right? It's a combination of their website, mobile computing, telecommuting, and whatever services they put out there in the cloud. And by the way, don't think that things are going to move lock, stock, and barrel wholesale into the cloud. If you look at your desktop, if you look at your own desktop, start counting the icons that are on the desktop and say, yeah, when I click that, that's something that's out there on the internet, that icon. This one, no, it's on my local set of servers. This one, yeah, that's, that's, that's out there on the internet. It's one icon. My point is, look at your desktop. It's going to go out to the cloud one icon at a time. One icon at a time, and it's going to take three, four, five, six years before a lot of those icons are out of there. And by the way, as everything becomes digital, Everything comes to us anyway. You saw all of those connection points that we've got there. OK, so the only concern you have would be if all of those people disappeared under that client roof, OK? And I don't know about you, but uh, last time I checked, that was called rapture or something. So uh, <laughs> I don't see that happening for a while. As long as those people are there, we're in good shape. Because those people are still going to need help desk. Those people are still going to have infrastructure. They're going to have a need for a lot of the things that you provide, OK? So our answer for you is get as many anchor points in that modern office as you can, all right? And you'll be in good shape. 